Welcome to the PBC 2020 NBA Draft Remote Film Room. Joining us today, we have first team all WCC forward and 2020 NBA Draft early entrant Malik Fitz. What's going on, Malik? Hey, how you doing? Doing pretty well, man. Uh, happy to have you joining us today. Hope you're holding up fine during the quarantine here. Uh, just wanted to, you know, take this opportunity to go through some of your game film and maybe chop it up together about what strengths you bring to the table as an NBA prospect, maybe a few areas you can fine tune and just kind of chat through all of that as you, you know, navigate this uncertain free draft process. Okay. Thank you. Thank, you. Awesome. Thank you for having me, by the way. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Um, firstly, I think, you know, you've had a little bit of a unique path to get here, right? You did your prep year at Brewster, which is, you know, cultivates a lot of future NBA players and then uh, headed to South Florida, ended up transferring, ultimately land at St. Mary's. And I feel like as soon as you got there, you really hit the ground running and have blossomed into a really interesting prospect. There's not a lot of, not a lot of sort of hybrid small forward slash power forwards with your size at six, eight that can shoot it like you do. And I think almost any NBA team is looking for somebody with that kind of skill set. So definitely, you know, excited to see what's to come for you and ready to dive into this tape and talk through all of that. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm excited. Um, yeah, like you said, uh, it was a little journey. Uh, like I, like you said, I started off at, uh, Start off at South Florida, then I got over here to St. Mary's, and it was uh, it was one of the best decisions I made. I can honestly agree to say that. Yeah, for sure. Everybody carves their own path, and it seems like you figured it out and now have set yourself up really well to be a, a really nice pro um, mm -hmm. now that you've reached that stage in your career. Thank you. So let's dive into this tape here. We're going to start with uh, – some strengths that you bring to the table on the offensive end. And uh, what we're going to go through is what I was alluding to before with your combination of size and shooting, right? So here you're matched up against Gonzaga. You get this ball at the top and you realize you're matched up against Petrushev, who was your conference's player of the year, but you're aware that it's sort of a mismatch between you two as far as like what you bring to the table in isolation and then what he can do on D. So I see you start waving people off immediately. Is that something that you know as being such a strong ISO player that when you get this sort of mismatch, like you're always looking to attack in these situations? Um, absolutely. Um, I see that. Uh, yeah, clearly I see that uh, Petrosev is guarding me, and um, I'm actually in the wrong spot. That's not even where my coach want me to be at in terms of uh, our switch package. Yeah. Um, but really want me to be up more towards like the middle area so I can have more of the right, you know, like the right uh, side to get to the, to get to the cup. But yeah, I sent, yeah. I sent through, but, um, no, any mismatch that I, that, um, that I see, I just try and take advantage of it because, uh, it's either, if your hand is down, I'm either shoot it or I'm, uh, just, you know, try and go by you. And, uh, I just, I shot this one. I, I don't know. I it felt pretty good though. So I was pretty confident that that shot would go in. And yeah, I started off Oh, pretty hot this game. <laughs> All yeah, I need early in the game, it's good to see that confidence early on, right? Your team's down five early, and you kind of, you know, take control, and you're like, "All right, you like you said, you recognize that you need some more space on the right, so you send your guy through." And I think calling that out forces Petrosev to kind of sag a little bit further to the right here because he knows he doesn't have any help this way and wants to, you know, maybe force you to where there's a little more help in the middle if you are going to drive. But he also knows that you're a lot quicker than him and you're like a 90 plus percent ISO scorer, right? Like amongst all college basketball players, you're in the 90th percentile there. So I think he has to respect that. And then, you know, your combination of size and shooting, you just rise up and stick this right in his grill. So uh, I thought that was a really nice play and something that, you know, going to the pro level, you'll be able to take advantage of those situations against big men as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, it's also a shot that, you know, um, that's also a shot that I work on. You know, it just it, it looks so simple, but you know, it's I've been in these situations, whether if it's a it's if it's a um if it's a big or a guard or a wing, it doesn't really matter. Um, you know, just during, you know, the times that I'm working out by myself, I, I like to practice on contested shots because I don't know, I, I've always been 
you know, um, how do I say? I've, um, you know, I've always been a shooter, you know, ever since I was in high school, I've always been a shooter. And then I just, you know, I use that as a, um, I, I, I realized and I, you know, I just continue to, you know, I wanted to continue to get better at it. And, um, this is just something that I can, you know, I, I work on pretty much daily. Yeah. And you can tell you've got a really nice rhythm there on the release. Um, so this next one here is against Pepperdine. You're also around the 90th percentile as a spot up guy. And that's going to be huge for you at the next level, right? Uh, you see this pick and roll actions initiated. You're spotting up on the wing here. Your guy kind of pinches in here at the elbow to try to help on the drive. And then you just have that quick trigger release, like no wasted motion, catch and shoot. Love to see that as well. Uh, another clip here against Pepperdine. I particularly like this one. Your guy drives the whole way to the middle. Uh, and then your man really has to come help on this one, right? He's diving the whole way from the weak side and you stay spotted up. Kick out to you. He tries to recover and you send him just flying into the stands on a pump fake here. Little quick one dribble step back, nail that. Uh, do you work on these kind of like pump fake one dribble jumpers pretty frequently in practice? Like, is that something that you put a lot of time into? Absolutely. Um, it's funny because my coaches, they, they always, uh, they always joke about me doing that step back. Um, but that's one of, you know, that's one of the moves that I, I, I do quite a bit. I'm sure if you watch some film, you'll be able to see that, but, uh, uh -huh. yeah, it was just a close out situation. Um, but you know, I, I normally do that with myself or with, the, uh, one of the rebounders or, um, during season, one of the, um, uh, not even one of them, but just, you know, if you need some work, you know, I'm, you know, a lot of times I wanted, you know, to work with the coaches. So the coaches, uh, one of the coaches were, uh, you know, we'll work and we we do this stuff right here too. you know, just make sure to be consistent. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, you know, you said if you dig through the tape that you'll find that you like doing that step back. We've got another one here on the next play. A little bit of a secondary break situation. You're trailing. This guy's trying to lock you up. Doesn't stand a chance. Give him that smooth little step back. Just nail it. So I think you can tell that you put a ton of work into your off the dribble shooting, your spot up shooting, just a very versatile uh, shooting package for you at your size, I think is going to be key for you on offense at the next level. Yep. So next we're going to move on to a couple areas to improve on offensively. And a lot of these might just be the context of like, sometimes you're forced to be the guy to try to make something happen uh, at St. Mary's, right. And get yourself mm -hmm. in some tough, like situations and make some tough decisions. So here you're driving baseline, uh, handles a little loose guy picks it out um, maybe you can just work on tightening up the handle a little bit because you're a really strong powerful driver and if you can just keep that ball protected like you have a good frame and good build to fend guys off right. here you try to use your physicality to your advantage but maybe you know pound it a little bit too much guy you know baits you into a charge there again not a big weakness or anything but like just you know having that awareness that that guy's going to tr probably try to force you into that because he can't really hang with you. So he's going to try to bait you into running him over, right? Yep, absolutely. Yeah, um, and, yeah go yeah, ahead. I remember the, uh, that was pretty much a scouting. I mean, clearly, like, as the season went on, a lot of teams did that. Um, you know, they yeah. on, the second, on the second bounce, they, they uh, you know, they, it's really a flop because I don't really, yeah. I don't really in like that. But, the, you know, they, they sell it so well. And like you, you know, it looks it, like the ref see it as that. So um, that's definitely something I needed to improve on. Um, it's uh, you know, just definitely with the handle part. You know, just also I just got to play a little bit slower. Yeah, and you can see your face here on this one. You're like, bro, yeah, that's, that, that's a flop right there, right? <laughs> yeah, because it's crazy. Because once I like I did the second, I just saw it coming. But I just you yeah. know everything was just happening so fast. I just I just knew it was coming, but. No, it's all good. <laughs> yeah, no, it's for, again, this is not like a real big weakness, but just like combo of tightening up the handle and knowing how defenses are going to try to combat your combination mm -hmm. of skills. Yep. Something mm -hmm. to work on going forward. Uh, we'll move over to the defensive end. And, you know, you're probably going to play a lot of four, I would say, uh, at the NBA level, like a stretch four type. You'll play some at the three as well. But either way, you're going to be relied upon as like a help side rim protector coming from the weak side. And I've seen some really encouraging flashes in that area um, throughout your season this year. So we're going to start with this one here. You can see you're 
and help position in the paint here. They're posting up on this side and your guy's not really an active threat right now. So you're doing the right thing and kind of, you know, cheating over here and keeping an eye on this driver. He goes baseline and you time it out perfectly and just have that vertical pop to get up there and, and deny him at the rim and even, you know, force a second miss there. Um, you want to maybe talk through like when you're on the weak side like this, you know, how you sort of are able to keep your head on a swivel and keep an eye on the drivers and be able to react to that quickly to get over there and get the uh, shot block. Um, so if you see during the film, luckily, um, the, well, my guy didn't go to the three point line, but either way, it didn't really matter because I would have to still be in help. Yeah. But, um, yeah. He didn't, I, I realized that, you know, um, I want to say that's Kyle. Yeah, I realized Kyle uh, got beat, and then mm -hmm. after that, um, I, it was just my winning. Cause I see, yeah, I'm, I'm realizing, you know, the time. I believe it's like a minute left. We're down one. Yeah. And, um, I just see it's, it's winning time, and I just kind of like kicked in at that point, and uh, I was just able, you know, able to come out. I, I timed it well. Um, I was, I timed it pretty well. I'm, you know, I'm glad I didn't get dunked on. <laughs> I'm glad yeah, I, but I'm you're 100 percent right though like the time and situation there makes it even all that more impressive right mm -hmm. like down by one big game I, this is in uh this is in the conference tournament right so yeah, uh, yeah just like a huge moment right there in the game against you know one of the best players in your conference there too and child's right getting up there making that block huge play uh this one here they're kind of in a little secondary break slow it down run a pick and roll action here and you know they get an open passing lane here to this side but you recognize this and you see like okay this ball is coming this way off the pick and roll and again you make that correct read really nice pop off a two feet block it and I like that you keep it in bounds and give your team you know an opportunity for a potential transition possession going the other way as well um is it similar logic here when uh, you're on the weak side against the pick and roll, just kind of maintaining that help position? And it seems like you guys kind of almost kind of switched this a little bit here, but like doesn't really matter because you're in help mm -hmm. side and end up committing anyways. But, uh, you know, are you always kind of anticipating when there's a side pick and roll that you're going to have to come tag this roll man or protect the rim? Um, it really much is just depending where I'm at in the situation. So, um, Let's see if you roll a clip. So I was my man is originally number zero. I want to say I think that's his number. So that's originally my man. Yeah. So, um, so how we do our defense here at St. Mary's is my 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 guy. I believe they interchanged. Yeah. Okay. So my guy. So I'm I'm really in the uh I'm on a two I'm on a the weak side. Mm -hmm. So I'm in the middle and so I can, I can help I can help a lot more. So yeah. I see I see that uh off the pick and roll. I want to say Kyle. Kyle is beat a little bit. And mm -hmm. I realized that I saw that out the I saw that. And I saw he was wide open. I saw the look of the uh, point guard's eyes. Yeah. And like you said, I just kind of read it and you know, I just kind of timed it pretty well. Yeah. And like you're gonna you have know? a ton, you're gonna have a ton of pick and roll being run at the NBA level, right? And for you to mm -hmm as the weak side defender already have the IQ and awareness to know when to rotate, how to time that out. And again, be strong enough to meet these bigs at the rim and have that verticality and that, you know, pop off of two feet to be able to actually, you know, make a viable contest there is going to be huge for you. Yeah, absolutely. We got one more here. Drive, you know, they're driving baseline, kick it to your guy, swing it back around. You're doing a nice job of like helping, jumping these passing lanes, good effort throughout the entire possession. And then you find an opportune time to like get in there and get your hand in there and poke it and start a uh, fast break opportunity the other way. I think you also do a nice job like in that clip of utilizing your length to kind of dig in and disrupt if uh, another driver starts getting into the paint and you see that split second to kind of help off your man and dig in. So that was another nice off ball read there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's um. Coach Bennett is really big on defense, and uh, you know he, that's what he preached to us every day. And I, I looked at that as a challenge because I know, especially in high school, I wasn't, I wasn't uh known to be one of the you know the best defenders. And this year he challenged me. Uh, Coach Bennett challenged me this year, and I wanted to you know I wanted to improve, um, definitely because you know at the next level, it's going to be guys you know, 
professionals, you know, like, you know, these are, these are real pros. So, um, I, I you know, I, I really thought about that and, and, um, and like the digs, like it's kind of, you see, you can see like on this, on this clip that like digging is, is something that, you know, is, uh, is something that, um, that we do a lot, you know, we do yeah. that we practice a lot in practice. And especially if we guard somebody that's like a paint cover, for example, is Jolie Childs. Yeah. Um, you see at the top of the key number, four, I want to say some for Alex Duke is him digging. So that's something yep. that Coach Bear is make sure, um, especially when we got somebody like Childs, you know, when we have like a paint cover. Um, digs are very important. And, yeah. And, and, and it works out for us. For sure. Love to see that. And then now we're just going to touch on just a few clips of you on closeouts on D. I think sometimes you get a little over, can get a little overzealous on them and get yourself off balance and then give up a driving angle there. So there you kind of hop into the closeout and he's able to sneak by you. Another similar play here, uh, picks, you know, gets into the middle. You're kind of, you know, sagging into the paint, but then your closeout gets a little, little off balance and he's able to get into the paint there again against you. Um, yeah. Is this something that you're thinking about maybe working on like, getting those sh shorter, choppier steps and maintaining a stance on these closeouts so that these guys can't get these easy driving angles here. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's just, it's just being uh, undisciplined in that situation. Um, uh, on a closeout, just, just like I said, you know, just being, you know, disciplined, you know, just stand down. I got, in, I got in quite a bit of trouble for, you know, jumping off a, on a closeout. So, uh, um, that's definitely, you know, something, you know, I got to, you know, make sure to just keep, you know, just make sure I keep, you know, keep focus on. And as you know, in that, in that last clip, um, I turned my head away from the ball. You know, yeah. That's something, that's something that I, I, I did quite a bit uh, this past season. And, you know, it was, it was, it was kind of frustrating because, you know, my coaches would talk to me about it, but, you know, I just kind of get so focused on, you know, the man. And then, um, you know, like for that, for that situation, for that play, when the ball was kicked out, it's kind of, you know, already a bad closeout and he got by. So it's definitely something that uh, I want to definitely continue to, you know, to grow on. Yeah. And it seems like, you know, you have the sort of self-awareness to know that that's something that, you know, here and there that you could just button up a little bit. It's not like a huge weakness or anything, but if you just like continue to focus on that, especially at the next level where the floor is going to be spaced a lot more and maybe that closeout distance you're going to have to cover is going to be even a bit longer. Right. So it's going to be even that much more important to like, you know, obviously you got to get out there, but you got to make sure that you maintain a good position to be able to like open up and recover afterwards. Right. Cause the guys, yeah. the guys that I'm trying to be going there, a lot quicker. <laughs> They're definitely a lot quicker. Yeah. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of quick guys, and I, I have a feeling that you'll be able to use, you know, your tools and your skill sets and then continuing to put in that work to your advantage to be able to stay in front of them. So, um, no yeah, appreciate you taking the time to, you know, go through that film there. Definitely enjoyed chopping it up about those certain things. And, you know, in light of the uncertainty surrounding this pre-draft process, you know, like normally if you were coming into the draft as a junior, as an early entrant, you'd be arranging a lot of, uh, you know, in-person workouts with these teams and then competing in like, uh, usually there's six guys at a given workout. You'd be competing against other guys that are projected to be drafted and being able to kind of show out against them, them in an intimate environment and making that statement to teams. But, you know, with the COVID-19 situation, you unfortunately won't really have that opportunity. So what I wanted to do was kind of give you the stage now to, Kind of express to NBA teams what you bring to the table. So, who is Malik Fitz? And if an NBA team was to bring you into their organization, what could they expect from you, both on and off the court? Um, I would definitely say any team that I go with, they gonna get someone that wants to win. You know, someone that wants to, someone that wants to, you know, not not just be average, but someone that wants to improve in every aspect of his game. Um. I can say that, you know, growing up, that's just how, that's just pretty much been my mentality. Um, I've always been the underdog. You know, I've always been the, the guy that no one really, um, no one really knows about ever since high school, uh, even in college now. But um, I don't let that affect me. You know, I use, honestly, I use that as motivation. I let it, you know, I let it keep going. But, um, you know, teams, teams are going to, they're going to, they, they're going to get someone that, you know, that will be all in no matter what. Um, he's going to, I'm going to buy in. 
um, someone that, you know, a high care. I, I would give myself a high character God because, you know, I give that credit to my parents. They raised me the right way. And, um, you know, that, that what goes into the off court things. Um, you know, someone that, someone that would want to help, you know, as much people as possible. Um, that's something that I would like to do just for like the people. And I'm not going to, you, I'm not someone that you have to worry about, you know, embarrassing the, you know, the, the whatever team that I'm on. And, um, and that's pretty much it. You know, just someone that's, that's going to work hard. Someone that's going to be respectful. Uh, someone, someone that's just hungry, the underdog, just a hungry underdog. Yeah, I think that teams, you know, are always looking for a guy that has that chip on their shoulder and has their head straight and that combination of, you know, being able to willing to put in the work and, you know, knowing what you need to work on and being willing to, like, take constructive criticism and apply it to your game. I think that's huge for teams. And I think that they're going to love that you have that mentality. Um, Put that with the combination of size and shooting and skill. And I think, you know, you're a very interesting prospect here in the 2020 NBA draft. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Well, thanks for joining Malik. Uh, stay safe out there and uh, best of luck. I'm going to be rooting for you as you proceed forward into the draft process. Thank you. Thanks for having me.